You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. I am your incredibly caffeinated host today because <laughs> I've been fasting, so I may speak a little faster than normal, but my name is Paul. I, I don't understand that connection, but I am Rob, and this is probably going to be my favorite show ever. I, you know, I, We're about to hit 1,300, by the way, which doesn't include all the special episodes and everything, but... Um, Yes, yeah, this is fun. I'm, I'm going to blush when we play this one. Well, Rob, I will just say I'm very grateful for this question. Jennifer, very grateful for you. Yeah. To everyone out there, this was such a heartfelt, thoughtful message that we wanted to play it. Um, and she asked a question which is, which is relevant to her and relevant to a lot of, you know, program managers and whatnot. But we're going to try to provide also uh, kind of taking the question a little bit further of discerning uh, a thoughtful methodology of how to know who the right drone pilots are to work with. Um, it's actually very easy. And I'm going to give you two or three questions to ask. Um, because there are things that we teach here at DroneU that simply are not taught anywhere else. So Jennifer, thank you very much for your thoughtful um, testimonial and question here. We really, really appreciate it. And we want to give you the right information to help discern how to navigate your path forward. So if you're considering and working with a new group of drone pilots or wondering if you should work with this particular drone pilot at all, we're going to give you the right formula of questions to ask because if they don't know these answers right off the top of their head, they're not going to be who you want to work with, period. Hi, my name is Jennifer and I am calling from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I absolutely love you guys. You guys are the best in the industry and I tell everyone about you and I'm just, I love you guys. I can't say that enough. <laughs> My question is this, what companies out there are utilizing the props program or any in-person or online training with you? Because frankly, I don't want to waste my time applying to companies that aren't using your training. You guys are the best in the industry, and I appreciate everything you put out there, and you're fun to listen to, and I wouldn't want to train with anyone else. Thanks, guys. Wow, Jennifer. Thank you. Um, humbled and blown away, and honestly, it's motivating to be even better. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, we definitely want to help you. So yeah. thank you on a level that is hard to say thank you on because we really, really appreciate your willingness to be just so public about your experiences. So thank you very much. Yeah. And you know, one thing I'd start off by saying is that there are a lot of great, I think, people, pilots who have good maybe smaller drone companies that haven't made it to the props platform, but they've learned from the drone U platform. Yeah, I was right? just thinking about that as well. So honestly, and I'll let Paul kind of take over here in a second. I know he's got some questions to make sure you ask anybody that you're contemplating working with or for, but uh, we've been working so hard on the build out of props and getting everything right in terms of the content and the flow and the UI and the UX. And so we've got a few in there, but not a lot, but 2023 is going to be the year. We're very confident in that and we're very excited about that. So I would imagine if that is your goal to work for somebody that has been through props or is in props, that uh, 2023 is going to give you a lot of options. It really is. Um, it really is. And, you know, I think that we've actually had a lot of students who have gotten a lot of work through DroneU who have become um, drone program managers. Um, so like if you're looking to work for a team as a pilot or be a manager of a team, we've had a lot of our experienced alumni bring uh, new teams that they just became a part of onto props. So that way those teams have the same like uh, systems of communication, the same systems of operation and the same systems of administration just to make it easier and more convenient for the drone program to scale up. I mean, that was kind of like our entire premise of building props is that, you know, we want the maturity of this industry to continue and the adoption of drones to continue with that maturation, which is not the right way to say it. Um, but that said, um, 
first of all, Jennifer, thank you very much. When answering this question, like Rob said, you could find, you know, who are Drone You members. You could go to the Where in the World section and learn uh, which are Drone You members. We have a list of every single person who's passed Flight Mastery, which is our systematic um, uh, coursework of in-person training. And Props is a hybrid approach, right? Props is online, and then we typically book in-person trainings with those companies after their pilots have completed the online version. So if you'd like, I mean, we're happy to field questions on, um, you know, who is, who's graduated that program. There are some issues in giving out names with some classified information slash personnel, um, et cetera, which is why we're limited on our ability to share that information, Jennifer, to try to give you context here. Um, but I think what we can also do to try to help you is, answer a question which we have been fielding a lot of lately and we have a new system um, that I think is actually ready to go. I just don't know if it's on the site yet of a system of testing people. Think, instead of a personality test, think of a pilot personality test. Um, and this test is very specific because Jennifer, I'm sure as you know, there are a lot of people in this industry who claim to know far beyond what they actually know. But luckily, um, fortune favors the brave and intellectual. And um, if you ask the right questions, you will know right away if these people are actually proficient in their operations. So I think we want to give you some questions to help you discern whether a pilot is truly proficient and is someone that you want to work with on those same systems of operations. So I hope this helps you out, Jennifer, and other people as well. But in this quiz, which there's a lot of questions, I'm only going to give you two or three because I don't want to give away the farm. What are these questions? Well, number one, what is the ultimate test to conduct on your drone to know you are going to have a safe flight, okay? And then how do you conduct said test? If the person does not know the answer to this question, you do not want to fly with them. Here's why. They have no methodology of discerning the true um, gauge of health on their drone. There is no health gauge, right? There's battery percentage, which is something that tells you how much, you know, propulsion that you have left in a given flight to know when to fly home. Yeah. Rob, if you had a fuel gauge that kept bouncing around, which I had this in one of my Land Rovers one time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was a 1937. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know what it was. It was a 94, 94 D1. Eh, uh, 37-ish. Yeah, it had 37-inch <laughs> tires. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, um, but that said, um, if they don't know, like let's say you were driving around in a Land Rover that had a fuel gauge that wasn't quite right. Would that give you the confidence to fly or to drive longer distances, complex environments, et cetera? No, 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 of course not. What it would do is it would cause me to cut the trip short. Right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would not go below, say, half a tank or whatever the threshold is I decide is safe. Well, that's ultimately how most drone pilots are flying because they're counting on battery percentage. They don't actually understand the systems of batteries and how they work. That you hit a certain level of that battery and then you have exponential loss of power. It's not like a linear curve of power loss on these batteries. You hit about, you know, some people will say like, oh, you hit about 30 percent and then you just go straight down uh, and you lose all power. And that's when you damage batteries. This is evidence in the deviation of how DJI measures battery percentage percentage versus someone like Skydio, right? Skydio says our battery starts at 100 and goes down to zero. Well, we know that's not true because you take the battery to zero, it keeps flying around, right? They're just changing the perception of battery percentage. Ultimately, what's really going on is that the battery percentage wise will typically go from say one to 20%, like on a DJI battery, right? Well, if you actually take battery voltage and you know what that key point of battery voltage is to allow for that margin of error to say drive home or fly home um, and actually know that this battery voltage indicator is going to work no matter whether it's 100 degrees, 20 degrees. 50 degrees, 70 degrees. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're at low elevation or flying at high elevation. It doesn't matter if it's a super windy day or there's no wind. It doesn't matter what the humidity is. This voltage indicator is always going to tell you when to fly home. This there's, is... I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say there are some drones that don't, don't let you see that, right? There are some drones that do not let you see that. Yeah, Autel is one of them. Skydio is one of them. 
Um, and there are various models between all drone manufacturers that it doesn't show you. Perfect exactly, example, yeah. uh, Mini 2, right? You can't even see the cell voltage. But a Mini 3 Pro, you can click battery, details, show details, and it shows you the voltage for each battery, which, again, 3.6 volts. Think of as a, um, a mean average. I don't know what you would call that as far as like a technical indicator. Um, when you've got bring it home, (laughs) but, um, if they don't know how to conduct a battery test and they don't know what they're looking for and how long to ram elevation on that battery test, it wouldn't work with them because it's just a matter of time before they fly in an environment where the, maybe their battery is a few years old. Maybe it's been used a lot. Maybe it's a really cold day. If they don't know how to do that battery test upon takeoff, I would not fly with them because that's, that's just like, um, a Cessna pilot's engine run-up test. It's the exact same thing. This is one of the reasons why the NTSB chose to work with us is because we have these manned ideological systems that we apply to unmanned systems. So that said, what's another thing? Um, Rob, let's see. I'm going to put you on the hot seat here. Okay. I'm going to actually try to make this in. It's really cold in Colorado, so I don't know how you're going to do that. That's a good good point. That's a very good point. What is the uh, fastest flight pattern to bring a drone down in the case of an emergency <laughs> well the fastest or the 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 correct fast well i'm not talking about dumping the damn thing okay i'm talking about actually shut being able down, to people <laughs> he's like an emergency shut off there's your answer <laughs> this speaks to the specificity of your questions being important <laughs> It's actually a really good point. <laughs> but do you remember communication, that? Communication, communicate. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the toilet bowl or whatever you call it, right? The tornado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, yeah, same, thing. same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Except toilet bowl has, well, both toilet bowl and tornado have sort of a negative connotation. So. Well, and that toilet bowl motion, like it, that's indicative typically of a GPS error. If you take off and hover and it toilet bowls on its own, mm. that's typically indicative of a GPS error land immediately. Interesting. So... Uh, there you go. So anyways, that's generally, I, I, although I think a lot of people have said over the years they don't ever do that and they land fine. Yeah, that's like saying um, you're right on every single trade. That it's just it's physically impossible to always be right I wish. on every trade. Yeah, <laughs> I wish. So, yes, it is. Um, just saying. Anyways. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you have you have rules because it's kind of like, I don't know if this is a good analogy or not, but you have insurance, even though you hope you never use it. You use the right techniques and systems to increase your, um, reduce your risk. Yeah. And not have to use your insurance. Yeah. That connection sucked. (laughs) But hopefully it makes sense. That makes sense. (laughs) I think another question to ask these pilots is, uh, Rob, I'm flying a drone with you. We are flying a Phantom, like the one over your head. And we are flying line of sight. That's an important indicator, line of sight versus FPV. Okay. Mm -hmm. Flying line of sight. Yeah. I turn the drone around and it's now facing us. Is this going to impact the controls at all? <laughs> yeah, it's going to reverse them. That's exactly correct. Yeah. it's good. If reverse orientation means reverse controls only when you're flying line of sight. If you're flying FPV, that doesn't exist. I mean, I could go down the rabbit hole because we have about 30 questions on our quiz uh, for how to discern or how to know when a pilot is proficient or how to know right. if a pilot is able to fly for you, which will be on our prop site, propsflightschool.com. It is powered by DroneU. Instead of creating DroneU Enterprise, we wanted to create professional reliable operators who practice safety that is props indeed and jennifer if you want to feel free to email me and we can maybe be a little bit more uh, divulgent as to some options for you 100 percent. i'd be happy to do that yep 100 percent. and we have a 3d model named after her last name too so that's right uh, Sloan Park. yeah i wasn't gonna say it but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's right so it's probably on uh sketch fab right it is yeah, yeah. uh-huh and then we've got a before and an after that version. was in arizona that was that in arizona yep yep and oh that was the one thing i wanted to say before we ended the show jennifer thank you very 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 much um for sending in your praise and testimonial and question email us as well we'll give you the full proficiency test of questions to ask people but um Tulsa, Oklahoma is where one of my favorite churches is. 
um, uh, Pastor uh, Michael Todd, and um, he may not be for everyone. I totally get that, but I do see it as an no omen. Pastor is. Yeah, that's true too. Um, but I do see it as an omen that she's from Tulsa and all this positivity and whatnot from the same place where I'm virtually going to church every Sunday. And so that just makes me feel good and shows me that the eye in the sky is is always watching. So <laughs> the eye in the sky. Yes. Anyways, Jennifer, thank you very much for the question. Uh, again, I don't want to go on and on, but uh, yeah, you blushing the entire show probably. Appreciate you and appreciate everybody that listens, everybody that becomes a member. If you're not a member, we'd love to have you join us. It's a fantastic community and we're going to have a great 2023 in terms of new content. We're updating so much stuff. We've got a it's really exciting. I'm very excited about 2023 and about our community and about the coaching calls. And there's just a lot of great stuff happening. Beyond that, if you have a question, ask DroneU.com. We'd be happy to engage with you here as well. Yeah, 100%. Also, DroneU members get something that we have never given before, which is coaching. So you can join us for our monthly coaching calls where it's a group coaching setting, just so you know, where we're going to go over some of the biggest problems that you're facing and also try to provide um, coaching materials and assets to help you stay accountable to yourself in growing through this adventure. And something that I heard this morning I wanted to repeat today, um, and I can't believe this was on Bloomberg, but it was, which is... You know, a lot of people talk about uh, loving that they hike, right? I love to hike. Do you love to hike? I love to hike. Like the, the point of the hike is not always to hit the peak of a trail, but it's rather the point is to just be on the trail and enjoy the adventure. If you're ready to build confidence and enjoy your adventure of drone piloting more so than you would with anyone else, then you've got to become a DroneU member, thedroneu.com. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Not a Bald-Headed Show thought I'd throw that in there. But it is. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>